Hey, what is going on guys? It is Chuck here and today we have another Firebot tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at two chat games. Now these are games that I have created uh, for my own stream. I'm going to be sharing them with you all as Firebot setups. They will be two separate setups so you can choose to import both if you want them both or just one if you want one. I mean you could do neither. Now I was asked by Kaiser the Redbeard and he said how do you recommend balancing the complexity of custom chat games while ensuring user engagement during live streams? So I really appreciated this question. Thank you, Kaiser. My thought on this, and you'll see this with the two chat games I've I've built and I'll be sharing it uh, with you all today, is I want my chat games to require just a single command from a viewer. I don't want them to have to do lots of things while the game is going. And I want to leverage RNG to really determine the outcome of the game. So that's one way that I've figured out how to reduce spam in chat. So with that said, check the description down below. I'll link to a GitHub repository with uh, downloads for each of the game setups. So feel free to download them, import them into Firebot, and we're gonna be jumping into Firebot right now. Let's get into Firebot. All right, so I am in an instance of Firebot that I use for these videos. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure you go to is settings database and that your viewer database is enabled. You're not going to be able to uh, create currencies or things like that without a database for your viewers. So turn this on. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have created a currency. So I created just a default currency here. I just called mine points. It's important while we import these setups that you either copy the name exactly as it appears here, um, or if you know exactly how to type it, great. But the setups will require that you type the name of the currency correctly. So the first game we're going to import is my spins game. So this is similar to a slot game. We're gonna go to setups and we're going to import a setup here. All right, so we've got our spin game by Hey Apple. We're gonna import that. You'll see that we have it all linked here, including a, a link to this video you're watching right now. Uh, it is a fully configurable chat game. There's bad luck safety in this game too. So what that means is that if your users are losing quite a bit, you can allow them to uh, increase their luck over time if they keep getting zero out of three dings. Um, now the math here, uh, so you'll see, so select a currency to use. We're gonna use points. We're gonna convert this from gold to points. That's the name of the currency. Make sure that these match. What is the minimum bet allowed? We're gonna say one. What's the maximum bet? We'll say 5,000. You can put any values. Um, I would recommend not letting these be too big. Um, in my in my stream, it's 50,000 as the max. Because um, when they win, they can win big. What is the win chance out of 100? I recommend keeping it at 40. They have three tries um, per ding or per spin. So uh, this is calculated for every spin separately. Bad luck protection. This is the percentage that this is increased and this stacks against the user. So if they lose five times, uh, basically they get five zero ding spins in a row or something like that. Uh, or throughout the game. If they only win once, it doesn't reset their white protection. It's not until they get a triple ding. So if they spin five triple zeros, this becomes 25 added to this 40, so 65%. So eventually they'll win big. Uh, you can set this to zero if you want to leave this disabled. Um, there's little tool tips here to explain what all of these are. Um, now when a user gets a triple ding, in this game, there's also extra dings that can trigger off of a triple ding. So if they hit all three dings, right now it's set to be a 20% chance that they can get extra spins. So whatever their win rate is here, we take into account 10 extra spins that they can make money on. So they could win really big with uh, one of these triple ding hits. So they have to hit triple and then they have a one in five chance right here. You can adjust this down to zero if you want to disable the, the extra dings. And then the payout amount. I recommend leaving this below one. The reason for this is that you don't want to create a situation where if they get one ding, they've made their money back. 
Well, at least I didn't. You you want to require, at least for me, and the concept of this game is that they need at least two dings to make their bet back. So they lose 20% of their bet. So with all this said, we're going to import this setup and you'll see that there's going to be a new command here called spin. If you open this up under the number sub game or uh, sub command, we have all of these custom variables that you're able to go in and tweak. So if you want to change any of those values after the fact, what that max is, you can do that here. Now there's also stats against the user. So we track all of the stats against the user right here. You can see uh, that we go through, we store it against the user's metadata. So we use that viewer database to store how many dings they got. So over time, whether they're up on money or down on money, you can keep track of these stats. And I've used this to figure out if my game felt fair or not to my viewers. So the numbers that you see in this game are what thousands of these plays have turned into at this point. Yeah, there you go. 7,000 plays is what is how many times it's been used uh, in my own stream. That is the spin command. So let's take a look at it in action. So I'm going to make sure that I give myself some points. I'm going to give myself a thousand points and I'm going to do the spin command and I'm going to do a thousand. We have our debug on here so you can see all of the things that are going in the background here that we have triggering here. So, all right. So I hit two out of three dings and I won an extra 600 points and that is the spin game. All right. Next up, we're going to import the fort game. So again, this fort game is based on Sea of Thieves. So it references Sea of Thieves islands, uh, characters, things like that. I really enjoy this game. I think it's a lot of fun to play. One thing to keep in mind is that it has uh, solo sloop bad luck, meaning that if you're the only player that goes on the fort, you are unlikely to win. Um, it cuts your win chance down quite a bit. That is configurable. You can change what that does or remove it altogether if you don't want that. But this is nice because it encourages your viewers to participate together. Um, you want multiple viewers to join in on the fort. So again, just like before with the spin game, we're going to choose our points. We're going to type the word points here. The reason we do this is because I need to make sure that I put in the chat messages what the name of your currency is. Uh, what's the minimum bet allowed? We are going to put here one. The maximum bet will put 50 or uh, 50,000. What's the win chance out of 100? This is a number, so we'll put 50. So 50-50 chance of winning. Uh, how much time must pass before the fort is started? So think of this as your, your sign-up time. So when the first person kicks off the fort game, how much time do your other viewers have to join before the boat sets sail? So 60 seconds seems like a pretty good amount uh, for from my experience, but you can increase this. And then how much time after the game completes before a new fort game can be started? So with 60 seconds plus 120, we're looking at three minutes here before in between starts of the game. If you find that you want to increase this delay, you can. I would not recommend doing this less than two minutes. It can be very spammy in your chat. Uh, with with it faster. So now that we've got this all filled out, we're going to import our setup. And let's take a look at the fork command. So just like the spin command, we have a stats sub command here as well. So this is going to keep track of the player's stats, how many forts they've won, how uh, much money they've won or lost, what their win rate percentage is. So how many forts on average do they go in? Um, in my stream, I have a losing streak, even though other viewers have winning streaks. Um, I think I'm just not lucky. <laughs> and then this is the actual subcommand to make the game kick off. This is the amount subcommand. This is a number that they give. So all of these, again, these are the variables that you can go in and change after the import if you want, or if you notice that it does, you type something wrong. The argument checker, so the bet meets criteria, the bet is above the max, it's be below the max, it's invalid, you don't have enough currency, or you're already in the fort. If the bet meets criteria, then we decide if we're going to initialize the fort or add them as a new user to the fort. So here we have the initialization of the fort. This is the entirety of the game. Uh, we have the fort cleanup, this runs on a timer, so that's that 
120 seconds we put on the import, this is gonna wait before it resets the fort and lets it be inactive. We're gonna go through, we have all of these different things here. We're utilizing arrays to store chat members and the money that they bet. We take their currency away as soon as they sign up to the game as well. Uh, this is important because otherwise they could bet some money on this game and then go play slots and either lose that money and now they don't have any currency. Um, so we need to take it away as soon as they join. And then we're going through and this is gonna decide what it does. So this is the solo fort check. So this is where you can go in if you want to say that uh, whatever the, the chance is, if you wanna disable this, just multiply this by one. Uh, otherwise, we, we give them a 20% chance of whatever that win chance is. So we said before, the win chance is 50%. This is gonna make it 10%. So uh, we cut that down <laughs> quite a bit here if they are the only person on a fort. If they're not solo, we don't do anything, right? We're not increasing the odds there. However, you could. So that is the fort game. So let's go ahead and let's play the fort game. There are quite a few variables here, so we're going to disable the debug logging here. And we're going to put a 1000 bucks on the line here. So here we go. So hey, Apple's readying a ship for skull uh, for a skull fort and is looking for a crew. There we go. So there's the command. You'll see I put in the word points on the on the setup. It's going to come in here in the chat, and it tells everyone that I joined with a thousand points. So within a minute, this will start, and we'll come back once the game's going. All right? We've got wind in our sails. The seas look clear. The crew of the Morning Star are headed out for the fort. All right. Whilst the crew is loading the boat, a sneak attack from a galleon caught the crew by surprise. We actually lost. <laughs> so a few brave souls loaded their remaining rowboats and rode to sanctuary. So you'll see the final points tally for the fort. We'll see that their bet was multiplied by 50% effectively. So we lost 500 bucks. So that is the fort game. So I hope these give you a good starting point if you want to tinker with these and see how they're working under the hood. Uh, if we were to spend a bunch of time going over each and every piece of this in a video, we'd be here for like an hour. However, you're free to do that on your own time. If you have any questions down below how something works, feel free to comment. I'm, I'm replying to comments. I'm happy to answer any questions I can. You can take these games and turn them into whatever you want from here. So these are just a, a really nice starting point for you. Uh, like I said, you can use them in their entirety or make them your own. Um, if you don't play Sea of Thieves or have no concept of what Sea of Thieves is and things like the Morning Star uh, and um, Dagger Tooth Island, like if those don't mean anything to you, feel free to rewrite these. Uh, all of the uh, options that are printed out are stored in arrays. I would recommend if you're going to change that, go into something like Notepad++, format it so it's easier for you to make your changes and then just put it back in there. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, I'm going to be watching that community post to figure out what the next video should be. But if it is persistent on screen effects, uh, we're going to take what we did with the persistent sub goal, hijack that and use that for a new type of game. So uh, stay tuned for that. If we go that direction, if we're doing something else, then we'll do something else. But uh, eventually we'll get around to that other game that I'm talking about. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, if you wanna see more of my tutorials going forward, subscribe. I'm also on Blue Sky. All that stuff's down below. Uh, peace out, stay classy. I love you guys' faces and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.